What's up folks? Today we are talking about boots, Indy Ridge boots specifically. This ain't just a regular review of Indy Ridge boots. I know there's a ton of them out there about the durability, how they wear and everything. This one's a little bit different. I'm just going to be talking about why would anybody even want to buy Indy Ridge boots over any other boot? All right, so I know a lot of riders that, uh, you know, they, they ride in just whatever, you know, they don't feel like they need to go way out of their way to buy, you know, uh, riding boots specifically as far as gear. Um, because they have, you know, Timberlands or Columbia boots or whatever, and, you know, they're, they're, they're right, Timberland boots, they're a protective boot, they protect the ankle, they're a work boot, they're pretty, you know, rugged, durable. They've been making boots for quite a while, you know, it's a quality boot. Um, also, Columbia, this is one that I ride with a couple times, you know. Uh, it, it's, it's a decent boot, you know, it's waterproof, so it's, it's a little warm, you know, it's got padding inside and all that, so it's not ideal, but um, it's a quality boot and it protects the ankles and would do the job if I ever went down. However, like the bottom of it, you know, there's some downsides to it. It's for hiking, you know, work, whatever, you know, Timberlands for work, work this one for hiking. Um, and, you know, the soles are pretty aggressive, you know, and these little knobs that stick out, these little, you know, grabbers, it's good for hiking and all that and walking through mud. But when you're trying to do a gear select and kind of, you know, manipulate these things, you don't really want that aggressive of a sole uh, getting caught up on stuff. They're not ideal. So I was looking at, you know, Indy Ridge and, uh, you know, of course, you know, I, I heard a lot about them. You know, it is uh, very popular right now. Um, so I went and checked them, check them out and, uh, you know, it's a good looking boot, first of all, just to start off, you know, it is a, a good looking boot. I think it looks just as good as a Timberland, if not better. I mean, a Timberland looks like a Timberland, you know, depending on what, you know, if you get the chucka or whatever, it could be a little bit different, but they look like work boots. And these ones here, they look a little more casual. Um, and the bottom of the sole is not so aggressive, you know. Um, some might say it's kind of flat, you know. It has these little ridges on here and I'm not sure if you can pick it up. See my ridges? And it kind of go one way, the other ones go the other way. So I heard that, you know, people said that this design was good with gravel, as far as like, you know, gravel on the road when you're putting your foot down at a stoplight or, or coming to a stop somewhere. Um, and I've only owned these for, you know, about a month or so. I've worn them a few times casually and only a couple times while riding. Um, but the first thing I did, of course, was put my foot in gravel <laughs> uh, on some stones. And what normally is like, you know, the stones kind of roll your foot and you lose traction. It's weird that they're right. These little things here, these little blades, they're going two different directions. And then the other side goes the other directions. They kind of grab the pebbles and stones um, and lock them in there. And that becomes your friction and it, it actually gives you grip. So. Um, it's kind of deceiving because it's such a flat sole, but it's really good because you can move along, you know, your, your controls, you know, if you have pegs or whatever, um, you know, so I was surprised at that. Um, and as far as comfort, like I said, I wore them casually um, to the store a couple times, just out and about. Um, and initially it hurt my pinky toe. Um, so <laughs> they're really tight when you first get them. Um, you know, the laces are put in on the factory when they're, they're made, I'm assuming. Um, and there's, your foot was not there. They just lace it up. They tighten it up as tight as possible so it all fits in the box. I get it. Um, so they're super tight when you get them. But I don't think it's really the leather. I don't think it's the shoe shape that is the issue here that really needs to, to form. Um, so what I did was I, initially I had them tied behind here. You know, as it tucks in, I had them tied behind the, the tongue here. Super hard to get on, really tight. I was yanking the heck out of this back thing. I'm so glad this is here because this really helps out. Um, but what I did was unlace them and just left the, the loose lace inside of there and just let these laces naturally kind of expand to your foot and you know all through this you know not just at the top here but all through this is going to loosen up a little bit and they feel so much better uh, they feel like they're already broken in so I think I've cracked the code so if you are going to get some <laughs> um, all you got to do is leave them unlaced go do some shopping or whatever for an hour or two, walk around in them, and you're gonna find that this is all loosened up to, uh, you know, to your specific foot. And all you do is just kinda tidy them up again. This is what I'm doing at least. Tidy them up, pull them in, and then I'm just gonna knot this off um, so it doesn't pull out any further. It'll keep that same tightness. Uh, but I'm not gonna be tying them inside of there. It just, it's in the way. I don't like how it feels on my foot. And it does get in the way when you're first putting them on and it doesn't have to, you know, so I'm just going to go with the knot like I do a regular Timberland. As far as quality, 
the thing feels like a quality boot. I mean, holding it in your hand, it doesn't feel cheap. You know, it, everything is glued, everything is stitched. There's no stitching coming out. There's no halfway cut, you know, seams or leather or anything like this. It looks good. It's, an, it's definitely, you know, a quality boot. Now, you know, um, some might say that, you know, this is an expensive boot. They're about 180 bucks. Um, and yeah, it's not a cheap boot. There, there are boots out there that are cheaper, but there are some boots out there that are considerably more expensive. Um, and they don't do what this boot is doing, you know. So this is geared towards the, the rider that wants to have all the protection, all the, you know, the, the necessary things to protect yourself, what you can protect yourself during an accident. They want to get to where they're going and be able to walk around comfortably uh, in the, the, the same boots and not have to, to switch off. Um, so I know some sport riders, you need a specific kind of boot and that's what you're dealing with. I get it. Um, but this is for somebody that wants the comfort and wants the protection and the performance. Um, so another thing with the sole too that I, I wanted to mention is that it's crush resistant. So if for some of you beginner um, <laughs> riders, if you ever have to, you know, if you ever find yourself dumping the bike and your foot is caught underneath there, there um, these soles are crush resistant up to a certain point, I would, I would assume, but they're gonna help out. If you're gonna go with a Timberland boot, you know, those are usually about, you know, 100 bucks at the best, usually around 129. So you're, you're after the, the, the whole song and dance, you're at about 140, 150 anyways for a pair of Timberlands that look like work boots, that have aggressive bottoms that don't really work well with riding a motorcycle. $180 doesn't seem that all that crazy and anywhere on YouTube you can see somebody even if you reach out to Indy Ridge themselves I'm sure they'll throw you a 10% discount so you're probably gonna be paying like me I paid like $166 or something after the discount um, and uh, you know like I said the difference between a Timberland boot price and something like this is not all that big but you know like I said what you gain out of this for a few dollars more is you get a motorcycle minded boot and what I mean by that is it was designed towards motorcyclists and what we need and what we want to feel and what we have to deal with um, it has that in mind um, Timberland Columbia other boots that you're just casually buying that will work as a boot and protect you they're not minded for that, you know. They're they're thinking about hikers, about workers that need a work boot that's durable, rugged. These are just as good as Timberland. They're probably they're more comfortable than any Timberland that I've worn, um, and they look just as durable, just as well made. Um, it's it it really is a nice boot, and you know it confirmed it once I got it here. You know that it is it's a quality boot. Besides the looks, I mean you can't beat it. There's several different looks that you can find too with darker soles, with you know tan. Uh, the Comanche looks really cool. It has like a whiter sole and it has, um, you know, distressed brown leather. So if you look on the website, you see there's a couple different, you know, styles that you can get. Um, you don't have to just get this, this one different style. And, you know, with Timberland, you're kind of locked into that, you know, tan or black or the combination of, of the both. So just wanted to do a quick video guys and just kind of bring it to you of why I went with the Indy Ridge. It wasn't because everybody's doing it. It wasn't because all the reviews showed me that it's going to be a durable boot because even with my Timberlands or any other boot, I'm not wearing them for their entire life. When they get scuffed up and they get nasty, they start, you know, sagging a little bit. We're buying new boots within a couple of years. So, um, you know, it's not really about the longevity. It's about the quality. It's about what it provides um, and, and how it looks too. So I think it's hitting on all of those those items you know and so the obvious choice to go from you know a Timberland or a regular you know regular use boot to something like this is kind of obvious to me the price points are tiny and you're gaining so much more so anyways guys just wanted to bring you a quick little video uh, if you're not a subscriber to the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button right down here it's right there just go ahead and click it uh, it really does help a small channel like me and I do appreciate each and every one of you guys so I'll see you on the next one guys later